Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sam Gomez and I am a woodwind doubler in the Gainesville area, North Florida area. And today I will be reviewing the Schiller Alto Flute. Um, I think this is the American Heritage. Uh, same, um, same line that my Sopranino saxophone is part of. Um, but um, I figured I'd give this a review since I'm reviewing a lot of Chinese instruments lately. And um, you guys seem to like that kind of thing. So I've had this one for a while, so I figured what the heck, might as well do it. So it's a alto flute in the key of G. You can see it's quite long. Um, I'm a rather large individual, but I wish I had a flute to compare this to. My flute is in the closet, and I do not feel like getting it out right now. So... <gasps> Anyways, so alto flute in the key of G, uh, made by Schiller. You can see that right there, Schiller, Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, it's a gin bow. Um, Schiller just puts their name on it. And um, I've had this instrument for quite a while now, I think about three years. And um, it actually belonged to my wife, at the time, girlfriend. She was in um, music school and then ended up not pursuing music. So. Um, so now I have it. Um, talk a little bit about this instrument. So um, at the price point that you get it at, I think she paid $700 for it new, which for an alto flute isn't bad. And you can find a, a Gemeinhart or an older art leaf for I think about $1,500, $1,200. Um, and for that, I mean, you might as well just bite the bullet and spend the extra, you know, four or five hundred dollars it is to get a, a, a sterling silver flute because this is not sterling silver um actually it, it might be it's tarnishing like it's sterling silver but um but something that's a little bit more sturdy because uh this instrument is not that now i have taken very good care of this instrument uh it has had a repad um in the past year the pads that were on it were just not super awesome and uh, were really bloated and things weren't closing so out of the out of the box, um, it did need some adjustment. Um, it does play in tune. Uh, keep in mind, it is probably about a hundred degrees in my camper. It is very hot right now. So I mean, I mean, it's an alto flute, so I mean, it does the, the thing that an alto flute does, which is play the alto voice in the flute family. So, um, and it does so rather well for the price that you get it at. Um, there are some pretty decent features on this. Uh, it has a roller from B to B flat, which is pretty cool. Um, it's not the most slick mechanism in the world, but it does work. And um, every once in a while, this screw that has the roller will come loose. But you just screw that back in. Remember, we're, we're talking about an alto flute that you can get for $700. All right, so don't be expecting much. And I've noticed with Schiller instruments, because I have played a few, um, they kind of hit and miss. Sometimes you get a good one, sometimes you get a bad one. I give this one like a C plus. It does the job. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not really a flute player. I do play flute if I need to double on it. Um, but I'm not practicing flute every single day like I do with saxophone or bassoon or clarinet. Um, so it um, has a range to low C, which is pretty standard on most alto flutes. I have seen some that go down to low B, but, um, but this one goes down to low C. Um, some other nice features on it. Uh, it, it. It's in line. I got big old hands. I haven't really seen any offset alto flutes. I'm sure they're out there for smaller hands. But um, but this one is in line. Uh, doesn't really have any big bells and whistles. It's got a, a B flat trill key. I think that's what that is. Yeah. C, B, B. Yeah, B flat trill key. I'm um, sorry, I had to think there for a second. Um, standard trill keys up 
down here for those. Um, it does come with uh, a curved head joint, which is rather nice. So if you're a, a if you don't have the arm span like some taller people do, like myself, it does have a a curved head joint, so you can have it a little bit more closer to you like a normal flute. Um, adjustment materials. Um, the corks on this are okay. I did have to get some corks changed out on this because some of them were falling out. Just, I guess, the glue that they were using at the factory wasn't super awesome. Or maybe it has to do with the fact that it's 95 degrees in Florida. Probably close to 80, 85% of the year. Um, which, you know, will melt some glue. Uh, it does have some adjustment screws on on A right here. I don't know if you can see that. Where is it at? Eh, adjustment screw right there. So that is pretty nice. Again, a professional touch. I have seen some flutes that don't really have any adjustment material. So you're just having, I mean, uh, adjustment screws. So you're just having a bend metal. So that's kind of a nice feature. It also has one down. Where is it at? I saw it. Down here for F sharp. Where is it at? Right there. which is rather nice. Um, for the most part, it plays in tune. Uh, that's kind of what you're looking for in, in Chinese instruments. Is Are they usable? Do they play in tune? For the most part, yes, it does play in tune. Uh, I do have a little bit of a hard time getting up to the second and third registers. I can hit, I think I can hit an F. <laughs> find it there for a second um and um so yeah i can hit that it is relatively easy to get around on it feels pretty good underneath the fingers um there's a roller for the low c which is pretty nice but i think that's pretty much standard on most flutes in general um the metal it's kind of thin um I've tried my hardest not to drop it over the years, but there is a little bit of squish to this. I know that this part right here isn't very, very thin um, in general, but um, it does have some squish to it. The metal doesn't feel super, super uh, thick. Um, probably not made out of the best material, but, and the, the posts do have some bend to them. Uh, key cups have some bend to them. So just not the best metal quality, which um, for that extra four or 500 bucks that you could get from a Gemeinhardt or an Artley, or hell, even a Pearl. I think the Pearls usually run about two grand though. Um, you might as well just get that. Uh, I had, I mean, my wife had a budget, you know, fresh out of high school trying to get uh, an auxiliary flute she already had a piccolo a rather nice piccolo might i add i think it was a pearl composite um so like a mix of like wood and resin so i mean already a really nice fl uh piccolo really nice flute um you know didn't want to really drop all of that coin on an alto flute if you're not going to be playing it all that often um but as far as usability, I have used it in pit orchestras before, and it has done the job. Um, obviously, it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that, say, a um, a more professional flute uh, would. doesn't have all the trill keys, and doesn't have all the adjustment screws, and, you know, it doesn't have a, a rose gold head joint or a, a solid silver head joint. I really don't know what this is made out of. I'm sure probably some sort of uh brass if i had to guess um very thin brass but it gets the job done and it sounds half decent so i mean like Thank you. 
no, it, it does the job. Um, pardon my, my flute playing skills aren't exactly where I want them to be, but, um, <laughs> it does pretty okay for something just to dick around on, you know, saying, oh, I have an alto flute, um, for your own personal recording projects. I have used this for my own personal recording projects. Um, it does the job. It, it does the job. And that's about what I can say. Um, that's really about it. I thought this would be a longer review. Um, the case here, I guess I can show the case. I usually do show the case. Uh, it's about like it was with the Schiller. I mean, you obviously you have room for the flute itself. And then there's a place down here for like swabs and cork grease and whatnot. Um, there's a little pocket up here. I think it came with the gloves. Like, yeah, like there's a, a cleaning swab right here. Uh, a, a polishing cloth which I don't think has ever really been used, but and it holds the inter instrument in place, it's a case. Um, I think it, I think maybe it had backpack straps at one point. I don't think it did. I don't see a place for backpack straps. I don't feel anything in this little pocket right here. It does have a nifty little shoulder strap. So you can just sling it over your shoulder, which is quite nice. Um, but all in all, I mean, it, the inside, it's made out of styrofoam. So over time, it will deteriorate, and you will have to go find another case. Um, I think, you know, there are aftermarket alto flute cases. Um, the price points on those, I do not know off the top of my head. But um, overall, I give this like a C plus, maybe a, maybe a B minus. It, it does the job. And that's about all you can really ask of it. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to, it's not going to, you know, be like, wow, you have a Schiller. That's cool. You know, it's not like that. It's, you know, when people t say Schiller, they're like, oh, Schiller, what's that? So, you know, it's a Chinese alto flute. It, like I said, does the job, does it adequately. Uh, nothing, you know, too terribly crazy, but um, you do have to grease these every now and then these end joints uh, or the the uh, I guess the boot joint I don't know what you would call this joint um, the low joint and the head joint um, you do have to grease those every now and then whether it be just a little bit of oil or some cork grease or something but um but that creates leaks over time and you know it's I, I just put a little bit of water and just I don't know if that's bad for it, but I usually wipe it off every every time I use it, which I have not broken this thing out in a while. So, but anyway, um, oh, it does have rolled tone holes like most flutes. Um, as I'm looking at this, yes, it does have rolled tone holes. It has metal resonators to make it a little bit louder. So that's pretty cool, um, as alto flutes usually are quieter instruments, but. Um, but yeah, for for seven hundred bucks, I mean, you know, if it if it were me, I would just I would just save up the extra four or five hundred dollars. It would be to just get an art uh, an aftermarket Artly or a Gemeinhardt or something. Um, but yeah, that is the Schiller Alto flute. Uh, I'm sorry there wasn't a whole lot to this video. It is incredibly hot in here, and it is affecting my ability to think. But there also just really isn't anything super remarkable about this alto flute. It does what it needs to do, and that's about all you can ask of it. So, would I recommend it? I think I would recommend you to just save up the four or five hundred dollars it is to get a, an aftermarket semi-professional alto flute that's not made in China, um, or at least just don't get a Schiller. Um, these are also the the kind of the alto flutes that you see on eBay uh, that are very low in price. I think it's the same manufacturer, but, but yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, I use it. It's okay. If you want it to get the job done, it will. Um, I mean, you can use it for, for flute choir, for, for jazz, classical, whatever you need it to use. But I feel like if you're going to use it in a classical setting, you might as well just, like I said a million times before, just save up the extra four or five hundred dollars and get you a get you an Artly or Gemeinhardt 
and that'll probably serve you a lot better because at least the metal is better quality and I'm sure it will stay in adjustment a little bit longer. That's another thing before I end this on uh, this case. I mean, it moves around a little bit in there, but this instrument, when I did use it a lot, I really don't, I'm not really playing alto flute all that much anymore because I'm really playing low read books when I was playing like read two and read three. Um, so every now and then it would call for alto flute, but um, it would go out of adjustment from time to time. So I'd have to take it to my repair tech and he'd have to bend stuff back because there's only two adjustment uh adjustment screws so and then ever and then after that the metal would bend back so i would recommend getting something with a little bit sturdier metal um this alto flute works for me i'm usually really careful with it but um if you're gigging this thing all the time i would recommend you get uh, a stronger uh, uh an alto flute with better alloy i'd say um that's not so flimsy because it does feel kind of flimsy when you're holding it but but yeah, that is the uh, that's the Schiller Alto flute in all of its amazing in all of its amazing glory. Yeah, I'm sure you can hear it kind of rattle around in there. But that is the Schiller Alto flute in all of its glory, and um, I'll try and review a little bit more of these. Um, Schiller also makes a bass flute, which I have been wanting to get for a while, just because you know it's a bass flute. It's freaking cool. But but yeah, this has been the Schiller Alto flute. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I didn't have all that much to talk about, but I um, hope you were able to get a little bit out of this. And if you think about purchasing one of these, you know, watch this video. I'm sure it will give you a little bit of information. All right, y'all take care. Bye-bye.